Hi, and welcome to Manny's Makings. Today we are, I'm going to do this beaded loomed needle piece, uh, needle case, sorry. Um, as you can see, I can store my needles in. Um, but the technique that I want you to, to pick up, looming is looming. And so once you set your loom up, you can use either the uh, box loom or sort of the cheap loom that you can get at Walmart. Um, this is 51 beads wide, so it depends on what you have and you'll see that as I come up. Um, this is to teach you how to put like a backing on a full backing. This is a beaded piece and it's full backing. And there's also a way that I finish inside here um, where I weave my thread back and forth between the, the uh, warp threads to make sort of a material that I glue so that the warp and wet threads stay where they're supposed to and um, then I you know put it on so I'll explain this as I go further so what you're going to need today is beads obviously uh, this is a pattern I designed myself and um, below you're going to find the link for the fire mountain gems um, and, a, and another place where you can get this is just graph paper see just graph paper see this is fire mountain gems graph paper see bead graph paper square or loom work so this is for my square and I just made my own pattern and I sorry about the glare Let's see if I can get the glare to stop but I just made my own pattern um, this is sort of based on a traditional uh, northern plains Indian uh, pattern and this is just a graphic pattern with lots of color um, I sort of figured out how big I wanted it and I made some mistakes so I said you need to add two lines here and you need to add three lines here and so anyways I made my own pattern. Now you can find patterns all over the place on the internet. You're more than welcome to it. But you can see my pattern is that's what it ended up looking like with the beads that I chose. And that's the other pattern. And I didn't actually make this long enough. So I actually had to add some additional rows on the back side so that I made this big enough for my um, to make this a needle case for myself. So because it's a needle case for me and not for anybody else or to sell, I'm not worried about it. Um, but yeah, is again, if you're making something for yourself, like it looks like it has a little book binder and it has four pages. I love it so much. So some of the beads I use for this particular colorway is I use, these are soft semi blue glaze rainbow. Um, and these are all Toho's and they're all rounds, Toho rounds. And this one here is, um, uh, dark beige opaque um, yeah dark beige opaque luster this one is a sour apple luster this one is turquoise Picasso hybrid um, that's what I use for the dark green the white I use quite a bit as you can see this was a, a brand new bag so this is a white opaque Toho round seed bead uh, this is a matte opaque terracotta and I use that for the brown here that's that brown there and so you can put whatever colors you wanted um this is navy blue matte toho round seed bead and this one here is um cherry matte toho so i just picked colors that i, I picked my colors first before i actually drew out my pattern and went knowing that i wanted to sort of do a blue flower so i needed two shades of blue a dark blue and a lighter blue to sort of give some shading in my flowers and then i needed two leaf colors which was this one and this one and then i just picked other colors that sort of went with it that i liked that would go on the back here sort of muted but fun so they're all the colors that are here are here too um just in lesser extent like with the red there's only the red and that on the edge so yeah so enjoy this project. Uh, the f list of everything you're going to need is below. So get ready to get started. And in the next, uh, when you see me next, I will have it on the loom and be working on it and uh, explain to you sort of how you get it on the loom and that kind of thing. So take care and I'll see you soon. Hi everybody. So I'm on to the next phase. Um, I'm going to show you, I showed you the finished product at the, at the, at the opening and um, we're going to move on to the next phase. So I, as you all know, I'm making a needle case. So this is partly done. I'm going to show you a little bit of how I do this, but I did want to show you, this is the same way that I loomed the other piece on um, that I used with this easy loom that you can buy at like Walmart or whatever. And if you look, the little peggies are down here. So I just, you know, this is 51 beads wide. So you could do, you know, anything you'd like. This gives me the option to go wider. But if I also use my traditional loom, the 
uh, box loom that's more traditional that one um, you can do as many rows as you want to you just set your beads up and then you tape them down on the box loom and you can do a lot wider pieces so this is going to get folded in half eventually it's not very big if you look at the size of a needle there's the size of a needle and the needle's going from this fingertip to this fingertip so you can see it's it's bigger than my needle because i don't want my needle sticking out the end but you know it's not massive um, and yeah, it takes a lot of beads and a lot of work. So the first thing I did was develop a pattern. So, um, see Fire Mountain Gems, um, and beads has a downloadable page and I will post that in the links below and you can, um, you know, download that page. And all I did was literally took pencil crayons and colored in, um, sort of, it just started coloring in a pattern and then figured out how wide this would be based on, you know, if I take a previous strip that I've woven and, you know, so many beads equals this many inches. And so I could sort of figure out how wide it would be. And as long as it was close enough, I was happy. So there's the one side and the other side. And I didn't leave room for the spine. So I made little notes to, you know, leave room for the spine and add two lines here, which I forgot to do down at the bottom end. See, I forgot to leave a line here. I was supposed to leave a white line like this says two up here. So, oh, well, whatever. It's a needle case. So <laughs> this is for me. Um, I've been storing my needles just so you know, the ones I've used, not the ones I haven't used. So these are all my used, gently used needles. And this is how I store them. So every time I run my hand in that area where I keep them, I poke myself and I don't want to poke myself no more. So I decided I would make a needle case and I'm going to line this with felt and make pages basically to put in it. And then I'm going to add a snap closure and I'm not sure how that's going to happen yet. Um, but you know, you've seen that in the finished product. So, um, at the beginning of the video here, so we're just going to keep going. So I'm just going to show you sort of how it works when, when I'm working with this big of a piece. So I have all my beads laid out here. I'm using my DC lawn, um, and I'm working with my chart. Let's see if I can get this not so bright so you can see it. So there's my chart that I made up. So basically what I do is I take my ruler and I have a ruler here that I've been using and I just cover up to where the line is that I'm at. So I'm like up here now. So I'm almost done. So, and then I just count. So I start from here. I put one blue bead, one red bead, and I have a space. Let's see if it'll focus there. Space. And then a dark green bead, two light green beads, a dark green bead, a white bead, a dark green bead, four white beads. So that's literally what I do. And I count across. And when I come across, so let's just do the next row. So I just did the last one. Where am I here? Don't know where I am. Okay. There I am. Okay. So I will show you this while I work on picking it up. So it's a red one and then two white ones. And then it's a green one, a dark green one. And then three light green ones. See, three light green ones there. So this is my own pattern. Uh, it's traditional in nature, but it's my own. So I sort of just drew it myself based on a familiar theme for me. So a dark green, then a white, and then a dark green. Uh, two dark greens, sorry. So I'm literally saying it out loud. This is literally what I do at home. So while I'm working, you know, I'll be watching TV or whatever. I'm just doing this. So then it's dark blue. So I'm over here. And then I need a light blue, two yellow. A light blue, two yellow. And they're not really yellow. They're just, they're sort of a creamy color. Um, then a light blue. And then two more dark blue. And then a white and then two dark green doo, doo, doo. and four white. So as you can see, this is, it takes a while when you have this many beads going across and then three dark green. And I'm supposed you could work in sections, but you really don't need to. Um, so I did three dark green. Did I get that one right? 
two dark green, four whites, three dark green, one white, a dark green. If you can hear a cat, I'm sorry. It's my roommate's cat, Charlotte. And she can be mouthy when she wants to be. So she's at my door because any space that gets told she can't be in, she wants to be in immediately, which is typical of a cat. <laughs> Many of you guys have cats. Two, two yellow. I'm almost there. I'm all the way over here now. Oops, I'm all the way over here now. So I'm two dark blue. I'm trying to keep it in frame. Three white, and I probably don't have enough white out. A dark green. And then I need, of course, a white, a dark green. And then I need more white, and I don't have any out. So then I get to put this down. So I need three white and a red, and a red to finish that row. So let me grab some white. So as you can see, I've used almost a, an entire bag of the white. It uses a lot of white in this one because I wanted it to be white. I don't know why. Something about having white in the background just sort of shows off everything. What did I say? There was three white and a red. Okay. So we're back to my... So I have this long string of beads and they're underneath. So I just take this and I'm going to move this so that hopefully you can see it and hopefully I don't mess something up too badly. Now normally I lean, I actually lean this on my body so that I can see it. So I sort of lean it up like this and then I just take it and I start at the one end and you're going to quickly know if you got the right amount of beads or if you messed up somewhere. I start at the one end and I just push the beads up in between. See, I'm just pushing them up in between. They sort of will stay there. They're not going to stay there perfectly, but look, there's no holes. And I can check before I stick this needle back through, I can check to see that the pattern lines up, that it makes sense, that it's working. And as long as I'm happy with everything, then I slowly make my way back through. And I usually push from the bottom. So you can see I'm pushing because I want to make sure that I keep above. And I just pull and I left it here. So go back in here, right beside it. Now, some of the beads I know are more persnickety than others. So see how this one wants to go below? Now you can't see it, but that one wants to go below. It doesn't want to go above the string. So all I'm doing is, and I'm trying to do this through my camera now. I'm just working my needle across, pushing up from the bottom to make sure that I'm catching above that lower. I'm not worried about them being perfectly squared and lined up or anything like that. This is all I'm doing. And I'm just pushing from the bottom to make sure I'm bringing my beads up high enough that I'm not catching that warp thread. Okay. And that's how I literally work my way across. That's why I tend to use shorter needles, partly because I bend the snot out of the longer needles if I'm using them on something like this. When I get into really long projects, it's kind of fun to do uh, longer needles. There we go. Push, 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 push. I'm just still pushing from the bottom. Push, push. Sometimes I can get all the way through to the end. And this last bead's always persnickety. Oh, come on, get in there. Nope, doesn't want to. So I've got one last bead to do. Make sure I stay above. There we go. And I'm in. So then I have them all on my board. And it, as you can see, this goes out wider. To fit one slot, these are narrower than this, than the slots here. So I have to pull. Uh, on the bottom end here, I don't know if you notice they're not all even. That's because I released the, the outward tension that was pushing outward this way like this, like this has. But because I need to keep these slots separate, I left the tension. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull it. And I'm checking to see that they're level here. This is what I care about, that this is nice and level. So as long as this is good and level, and then I just take my fingernail or a ruler and take a ruler and sort of tap these down. I'm just pushing from the bottom with my finger. Kind of like doing weaving work when you have a big 
leave anything. So I'm going to continue doing this, and then when I'm done, I'll come uh, come back to show you how to cut it off the board. Um, same way as you would do any other one, basically. I'm just going to release them from the knobbies at the end here. I'm just going to loosen up off this and take it off, and there'll be all these strings. And then we're going to finish it um, by putting this on the inside and covering the back side of this with some felt. You could use ultra, uh, ultra suede if you're making a little purse. You could actually sew up the sides to turn it into a little coin purse. Um, put some Belgro on, you know, as a fastener or a snap, um, a couple of snaps so that the coins don't fall out. Uh, a little zipper. If you wanted to, you could sew a little zipper in and turn it into a cute little coin purse. You could do lots of little things with this. So I'll come back when I got it all done and we'll uh, go from there. All right. Okay, so I'm back and I'm finished my piece. And when I measured it, it wasn't quite the right length from the one half to the other half. So I just added a few rows. I went back to the back. Now what we need to do is finish this piece. And this is another way to finish. If this was just a bracelet, you could finish it the exact same way. And in video three, and three, I showed you how you could put a small piece when you have the strings, a small piece of micro suede on the back side, um, and you know, and do a clasp or a beaded clasp or whatever you'd like from it. And you could do the same thing, and I'll show you as we get a little further where you would be able to do that. Um, sort of, so you'd understand. You could even at this point, once you finish it and you finish the edges you could actually use these beads on the edge to bead into and you know pay out a strip for yourself to make the clasp to come around the other side if you sewed these seams up um, to make a change purse or whatever you'd like so again change purse it could, this this method can be applied to other things and that's this is another method of closure okay so what we're going to do is work on this which just this weft and if you notice it pulls in at the ends I pull it tight on purpose um, that's just the end, very end piece of it but and of course I've loosened this one off now so that I can uh, I had to put these all back in to do the extra couple of rows but we're gonna work on this weft piece and what this is is just literally weaving in and out with a thread so I'm gonna show you how to do that so I have my thread still attached and I have a lot now I have a good arm's length worth of thread um, you don't have to have an arm's length well yeah an arm's length with a thread left over if you don't have that much let's see only have a little short piece or like you know a foot and a half or whatever we would have left and then um, you can always add more thread um, or you can um, tie this off you know bring this through a few beads come back out here and literally make a knot on one of these like if I came back through these a few of these beads I could go around one warp thread and make a knot sitting here because since I'm not going to care um, you know whatever but my suggestion is, is that you add new thread. So you could work your thread back in, you know, back in a little bit um, through your piece to finish off your thread and then add more thread. And start like three rows back all the way down, all the way down, and all the way down. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to put a snap closure on this. I'm going to be pulling on those beads a lot. And I just want to give them a little extra oomph, if that makes sense. So now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to double it over so that it's doubled up and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's close to doubled up so now I'm going to start to weave and you're just literally going to weave like you would um, I'm going to hold this up here hopefully you can see it so I'm right handed so I'm going to flip this whole thing Let's see if I can get this where you can see what I'm doing get my thread on caught okay so this is coming out on top of the thread so the, the first thing I want to do is go below the thread so that I catch it. Now when you're doing this, you got to make sure you don't split your threads. Because if you split, I'm just literally going up and down between each thread. So I'm under, over, under, over. If you can see my needle, it's just going, it went under this first one, over the second one, under, over, under, over, under. And I'm just going back and forth as far as I can. And you want to be careful you don't split a thread. If you split a thread when you're doing this, then you won't be able to bring your um, extra thread down and tuck it in tight. So under, over. And if you need to come up where it's wider spread, come up where it's wider spread. That makes it easier. 
and I'm just pushing my needle a little bit from the back side whenever I have to come above a thread. So we got a part way done. Let's just pull this. So this is really long and I'm going to get it caught like I just did. And that happens. Oh, no panic. There we go. Now for some reason it's shorter. It didn't double up. Well, that's fine. We'll bring it down. So the reason you want to double it up so you don't have to make so many passes. No other reason than that. So when I got it caught and it pulled, it pulled the needle on the thread to make the, th the thread longer. So we'll just bring it down so it's a little closer. And I've also, see I got it caught and I made a mess of these threads. See this one here? It's completely out of place. So we'll just put it back where it goes. Come on, get in there. There we go. And this one here. Because when I pulled, I yanked hard, so and I shouldn't have. And this happens. We're human. And I just want you to know that that we're human. So I need to figure out where I was last. So that was the last one I went under. So I go over this one. And under, over, under, over. Now this is a long pass, so it takes a little bit of time, especially your first one. Once you get going, it'll be easier. And I'm just, now you can actually even switch to a thicker thread if you'd like. Um, and this is also how, if you want to have sections of material when you're doing loom work um, between your sections of beads, this is how you do it. This is literally how you do it. Okay, so now I have that second thread. You can see the second threads there. Okay, so I'm just holding it down rather than trying to hold it up. But you know what I'm doing now, so that goes over. Make sure. Nope, so over, under, there we go. Over, under. Oh, something doesn't feel right because it should even out. So something's wrong somewhere. So I need to figure that out. So that one went under, over, under, over, over, under, over, under, over, under. under. There we go. The last thread I know, um, because I did the other end, should be over. If I start with under, it should end with over because I have an even number of threads. Because I have 52 threads because I have 51 beads wide. Because you have a thread on the outside of either one. So I just tuck it down with my fingernail um, and just tamp it down. Just like if you were like used doing it material, like if you were doing an actual woven piece. Now this first one, you can pull a little bit, but I'm not terribly worried about it. So now I want to go back under and then I'm going to flip the whole piece around because I'm right handed. So make it easy for yourself. Okay. So move that from the background so, so I can see if I can get it to focus for me. There we go. So that one went under. So this one's over and you should be able to, if you see the thread here, you see the thread here. So that means I have to go over it this time sort of it's a little bit of common sense but basically this is a little time consuming but it's uh it's completely secure um you're gonna we're gonna glue it but we're gonna release it first so you guys know from my holiday taking a week off holidays i've got a new roommate so she's moved in she has not packed all her stuff yet but she has moved in and she has a cat so we're getting to know each other and we're getting to know um, this wasn't a friend or anything. This is somebody we just rented. We're sharing the apartment to help with the costs. So I found myself in a situation where the person who was here and we were working together to pay the rent and everything just bailed on me. So I needed to have somebody else to help pay the rent. So I can't afford this place on my own. I'm not some big famous jeweler. So 
I don't have a big retirement pension or anything. I'm not even retirement age yet. So when life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. Just do the best you can. So there you go. All right, so this time I'm going to pull. And I, I want you to watch this end. I'm pulling, and that end's going to tuck in a little bit, just a little bit. And see how it moves it up from there? When I push this back down again, it'll stay tightened up. So I'm just tamping this down. You know, some people use forks and stuff. I don't bother. I'm going to flip the whole thing around again. Watch your tummies. Whoops. Get my thread caught as I do it, of course. Why would it be any other way? Back to this. And we go again. So I'm coming up from the top, which is where I should be. And that way I know I did it right, so I'm under over again. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I am done with my thread. Um, you want to have at least, uh, I would say, a quarter of an inch. Let's see how much this is. I'm checking the other end for you. Yep, so it's a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch is good. That's more than enough. Uh, I don't want to glue where the beads are because I want to be able to do, sew into these beads when I add the backing on. Um, I just want to put glue on the actual um, weaving here, this woven part of thread, um, just farther down. I'm gonna oh, let me use this. I'm gonna leave space here, you know, just a little space here, and just put the glue over here so it doesn't get all over my beads, make a hot mess. But I'm not going to do it till after I take it off. Okay, so I'm going to finish weaving this end in, and then um, I'm going to remove it from the loom, and I'll come. I'll come back to show you how to remove it from the loom. Okay, so as you can see, I've got everything done. My needle's still attached. Um, I also thought I'd explain. I had even numbers, so I was able to you know always do the same thing every time at the end. But if you don't have even numbers, just follow it. It's a basket weave. So let me just show you this up close. So one on one row goes over and the next row goes under. The next row goes over. So if you're checking, like let's say this was the row here that you're looking at. Okay. So let me just get this here with the tweezers. See how I can see the string on this one right here? And it sits above the one that's underneath it here. And this one, I can't see the string. It's the other string is covering it. So that means next time, if I had to do another row, this string here would have to have an over. And on the end, if you end going under, start going over. And it, sh it should work itself out. Uh, either way, it's basically a basket weave is what you're doing. And you're making a fabric by doing the basket weave that you can then stick glue on. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to show you all I do is take the thread. I want to finish it in the middle. I don't want to finish on the outside. And I'm going to come between. I'm sticking my between two of the other threads. I'm just cutting it off. All right because my needle's still attached, and I'm just bringing this down so it becomes part of the stuff. And then we just release this. So I'm just pushing up and releasing. Ah, much happier now. So this is going to fit my needle. See, you can see that there's the top of my needle, and there's the bottom of my needle. So it's going to fit my needles perfectly. So it looks a lot bigger on the thing, but it's hundreds of beads in it. <laughs> So we need to just release it. So we just take it and unscrew and take off these loops because I, you know, just put them on like the loops. Now there should be one or two that I had to double and triple wrap around. So sometimes when a warp, one single warp thread gets loose, I'll show you on the other end when I get there. And it doesn't really matter if you get them off this way or if you just, there, they all pulled off. So. They all pulled off. Okay, so let's say, let's move this where you can see it. Okay, so let's say this particular thread here is loose. Okay, so when if it's loose, I put it somewhere you can actually see it. 
then sometimes what I do is I take my tweezers and I take it down and I wrap it around one more time around this thing here and it tightens it it's if you get just the one thread that's loose anyways these ones can just come off so I'm just taking them off and most of them should just come off around from around the there's only two tied on which is the starter one and it was tied on with a slip knot and the end one so I should have two strings that are still stuck on here and I could just cut them off I don't know why I do it this way I just always do now you can see me I'm just digging in behind here to get the hold of the slip knot with my tweezers well let's just cut it see that's the one that has a thread on it so I'm just, I'm just gonna have to dig it out later anyway so so I can move my loom get it out of the way so this is the piece that I have left now it's this is not secured yet because you can see this these little fibers can move around see how I can see how they're moving around a little bit just put it down hold your fingers on the threads and push it again towards the towards the piece of work don't panic now the reason I want this to sit is because I want this to relax I know that the beads are crunched up a little bit on this end too much and I'm gonna have to let it relax and then I'm gonna have to pat it and when I pat it to straighten the beads out a little bit when everything's happy it's gonna I don't know if you can see this see how it's curling up at the end here it'll move this down the warp threads all this stuff that I just wove if I glued it and then I tried to do this I couldn't I couldn't get this to settle so I knew I put them on too tight and I could feel it um, but I knew I could fix it at the end so yeah just see how the threads are coming up it's fine I'm just holding on to the threads here the my warp threads see I can see how that's that's okay I'm just gonna put it back in close enough that when I stick glue on it'll stay okay so don't panic if that sort of thing happens okay and I'm just gonna let this rest and I'm going to massage it and uh, that's one of the big errors that people make when they loom is they don't let their beads rest now these threads here have a little stretch in them. I don't care what thread you use every thread out there has some stretch even cotton has some stretch you ever you know seen a put a cotton cloth in the in the thing and it gets bigger so every fiber has some stretch so I want it to relax and stretch back out so that it's nice and smooth and even and lovely and this is how you get a great finished product and I'm not pushing the ends here because I could I could take that whole weaving and really mess it up so I'm gonna let it sit 24 hours and then I'm gonna take and put some glue on here and I'll be back to show you that when I do that and then we'll just trim all this extra yucky thread away and I'm going to cut a piece of uh, red I've got my little snaps ready because I'm going to put one snap in the middle because it's just a needle case and I have my I have a whole pile of felt here red felt that I'm going to just cut up now um, you you can use um, leather on the back if you were doing this was a bracelet that you were doing a big long bracelet and you were finishing it off this way on the ends you could put a uh, micro suede if you wanted to run leather all the way through a piece um, sometimes people want to put leather through an entire piece over an entire piece um, if that's the case see this is what my needle case is going to look like isn't that going to be awesome so if that's the case um, then you can do the same method this is the finishing and the end and then you put leather uh, across the entire piece um, and you would actually have to put some glue on whatever side you decide is going to be the back side of your little piece um, just a little bit of glue so not that enough that it seeks through the beads so it holds the leather down before you stitch it in place or at least after you get a couple sides down um, just like I did with that little tiny end cap that I put on that bracelet that I did um, same method you would just do it for the whole piece now a good really cheap place because I know a lot of people are in budgets if you go to a used clothing store or uh, yeah like a Salvation Armies or Goodwill or whatever they have in other countries I know I'm sure England has something I'm sure that other countries have places where there's used or you know 
stuff that's not so great. Um, that's one place that you can definitely get um, material grade leather. So, and it's thinner. It's like what they make the coat, leather coats out of, not suede coats, but a leather coat where you have the thin leather, nice leather coat or a leather skirt or a leather pair of pants or a leather vest. So uh, remember to check the men's section. If you're a woman, please check the men's section. They tend to get rid of a lot more coats. Hus wives will get rid of their husband's leather coats and leather jackets and things like that. You can get them, um, if you get them in either the massive sizes or their little itty bitty sizes, either one will work. Um, they tend to be either on the sale rack or even at the consignment, like the consignment shops, but even on the like goodwill kind of places, they'll have like a, just get rid of this stuff. They'll be there or they will be my last leather skirt that I found was for somebody who would have had to been a kid. Um, and it was beautiful, uh, kid leather, um, and it was real leather, not pleather. I could tell and I could, you know, take a look at the seams in, in the inside and see it had been lined. It was beautiful. Um, I think I paid eight, seven, eight dollars for it. And it has, it gave me enough leather that I could do, I don't know, 50 bracelets, 60 bracelets. You can't get micro suede that cheap. Um, so you can, and there's nothing wrong with it. You just, it's phenomenal. So just a big, big, big hint and look at the men's sections because there tends to be more leather in men's wear than there is in women's wear. There's a stigma that goes with women wearing leather, but men wear leather vests all the time. So, you know, even if it has a hole in it, perfect for you because you just work around the hole, you know, it's just it's like get whatever you can um, at the cheapest price that you can pay for it. And you can use that for it to put on the inside of your bracelets. And because it's leather uh, material grade, it's thinner. If you want the really thick like shoe leather, like the strapping leather for, you know, belts and stuff, used belts is another place that you can get a used belt that's pure leather. And then you can cut off the pieces that you need for the length that you need to make your bracelet. Okay. So that's just some things we'll talk uh, later when I get this uh ready to be glued and uh, we're ready to go so i'll see you in a bit okay so i'm back and ready to do my gluing so everything's rested i just have a plastic bag so i don't wreck my beating board this is just a cheapy sandwich bag put it on there whatever way it fits so they don't have to move it and i'm going to use e6000 um you can use anything you like the e6000 is a little flexible and in this case because of the way i'm going to be bending it um i want it to have some flexibility so um, this is the best choice for me i haven't even cleaned this up or anything i got goobers on my end of my e6000 glue so again i always have a piece of scrap wire somewhere so i'm just going to take and put some you can put it on your here or you can put it on your wire i just put it on my wire I remember I always use just a little tiny hole. So I'm just getting some glue on my wire. Try not to get it all in my bead project and still show you. So now I want to do is I want to spread the glue. I'm spreading the glue with my wire and I want to get down to about two. I'm getting close, but not all the way. Um, I'm getting to about two strings away from the beads. Okay. And I'm just going to, putting more glue on so you can see I've got a big glob of glue there and I'm trying to rub it into the weaving that I made here at the end and this is a place where you don't want to be stingy but you don't obviously want big globs left on your stuff either because this is gonna you're gonna feel this underneath okay So whatever way you like to apply your E6000, that's up to you. I'm going to make sure I get the end there really good. I got a bit of a goober forming here in the end. Get it off my fingers. There we go. Get some more. So you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to coat this. Whoa, see that's too close to the beads. Hey, can you see that? There, pull it away. That was too close. Okay. So all I'm going to do is coat this and if I feel it's necessary, once I do the other side, I'll flip it and do the back side too. But what this is doing is causing um, these threads that are coming through here are getting glued into place basically because they show up on top every second row, right? And see how this one's a mess down here? I don't care because I'm going to cut it all off. So again, 
okay, I got some kind of virus protection notice on my computer. Isn't that fun? <laughs> no matter what you shut off and what you make quiet, it still all goes off. I don't get it. Okay. Okay, so I'm just getting gobs of glue and I'm just spreading it trying to keep it away from the actual beads because I'm going to go through those beads with my needle and I really don't want it to puncture through glue I'm just putting glue on I'm just making a coat of it of the whole thing and giving you a squirt making Making sure it's in those fibers good on those last couple of rows. You know, and coming up right up, you can see where I'm going, how close I'm getting to the without actually getting on the beads. Okay, so I'll wipe that off so I can flip it if I want. I'm gonna try not to get glue everywhere. It's gonna get on my plastic bag, but that's okay. And we can do the other side if we want. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the other side. I don't want it too gooby. Just a thin coating on this side. Just a thin coating just to catch a few of the threads. Only because I'm going to turn it back over and because I don't want it to glue itself to the plastic bag. Right. We got a little bit on the fibers there, we're good. Put it on the other side. So you get the idea. Then I let it dry completely. So I would give it at least four hours or so. Touch it, make sure it's good and dry. You check that it isn't stuck to the bag, you know, at some point. Make sure that it's drying, not stuck to the bag. And I I let it dry. And once it dries, I'm gonna cut it off right just below where the the threads are kind of funky, so I'm going to show you with the bead that uh, stinks in here. Get this lid off, so I'll pull this up to the camera to show you. Okay, so I'm going to cut it right sort of along there, right just before where the threads get messy. So I'm just going to cut it right along there, and then I'll have this little strip of material. You can cut it farther out, it doesn't really matter, it's all going to get tucked underneath whatever you'd like okay so I'm gonna cut it there because I have I know I have enough here but if you don't if you're worried you can cut it down here if you want cut your threads and leave all your threads hanging because they all get tucked inside when you make it so it might not be with my little project okay so I'm gonna finish gluing let it dry and then we'll be back and go from there Hi everybody. So as you can see, uh, it's all dried and glued and trimmed and you can see that I trimmed it really tight. So um, yeah, I just cut it off and what I've done is I've just taken it, let's see if I can get this to focus, and I just pulled this back so that I can see the row of beads at the top. That same sort of thing with this one. I'll do the same thing when I get to that side. So then I cut two pieces of felt. Now this is where if you want to, if you're lining a bracelet, you don't put the snaps on and you would just cut a piece of micro suede or a piece of leather that you could put inside. And um, this is where you would um, glue it on um, to the backing, uh, to the beadwork so that it would stay in place. Um, and if you're doing a bracelet with leather that's going to go around something, then glue it and just like put an elastic band around a Coke can or something so that it dries glued in shape. So especially if you're using, you know, little stiffer glues. Um, and the reason being is because if it, when you, when you curve something, it moves the bottom inside fabric. And so if, if you have it straight like this and then you move it, see how it goes like that. And you don't want it to do that when you, when you're actually gluing a piece that's going to be worn in the round. So, that's basically, you know, so if you're going to use it for that purpose, that's great. So I just put two, two snaps on and they're, they're put on. I just sewed them onto the piece of fabric. I just wanted to do that before I, um, and they're just, you know, I'm going to just open it and close it this way. So the whole piece is going to open and close like a little book. 
like this, all my needles in. And then you can see there's a second piece of felt and that's a little shorter and that's going to fit inside of um, the snaps so that when I close the book, I'll have a, another page and I'm going to sew it down the middle and the binding of the books once I get it all sort of in place. So I'll have this little nice little needle case. Um, you could use magnetic strips, uh, you know, those flat coil strips that you can get. You could put two here and then your needles could just lay in there on the magnets. Um, whatever you like to do, there's like so many options. But anyways, so now it's time to sew it on and I don't have any red thread. So I'm going to go with white thread and I have a needle here and I just need to do a quick knot. So I'm just doing a quick double knot. So I'm just putting it around twice. Shove this down as much as I can so I don't waste any thread or as little as possible. And I'm just using the thread from the project and I'm not worried about a big ugly knot like that because it'll hold and it's going to come from the back side. So let's start. It doesn't really matter what end. I'm going to start on an end. Um, you could start in the middle and work your way out to the end. The thing is, is that I have the snaps on already, so I want my ends to work out properly. So I need to bury um, this white stuff that I've made, which is the webbing that I sort of, you know, basket weave material we made based on um, the, weft, the weft and warp threads. So I'm just tucking it under. If you see, I'm taking my fingernails and I'm, I'm basically just tucking it under. I'm just taking my fingernails and tucking it under. You could you do whatever way you wanted. Okay, so because I want to just see the beads. See, I want it just to be like that where there's no like major white showing. So I'm going to just take this and I don't have to start right in the corner. Now I know I'm aware that the white's going to show on the back side, so I need to keep my stitches fairly regular. And because this isn't leather and it's felt, it can rip easily. Um, if, if I take just a little tiny bit on the edge, it's going to just rip right through and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take a little bit more and I'm just going to try to keep them consistent. So I'm just going to start somewhere, tuck that tail in side. And all I'm going to do is if you've watched any of my bead embroidery pieces, let's move some of this stuff off the background here so it doesn't have anything else to focus on. Okay. So all I'm going to do is I've got my thread coming out from underneath. I'm just going to come through a couple of beads. So easier said than done. So I went through three beads. So let's keep it consistent. I'll go through three beads each time, or maybe I should do two because I know I have an even number. So, and you can see I'm squishing stuff and I'm not worried about it. So I'm coming through two beads. I'm just try not to get caught up on the corner here. Okay, so I have two beads. There we go. So I've just gone through two beads and I come back out. So all I'm going to do is once I come back out of those two beads is I'm going to come back in to the fabric the same depth as I did before. Now at this point you could, you know, sort of almost blanket stitch it if you want. Um, or you could, you can choose how you want to stitch this on. Whoop. Of course I get a knot in my thread. Why wouldn't I? I'm filming. Okay, so I have the two stitches there. I'm going to come back up straight up and go into the next and do the next two beads. So this is a little time consuming, but I don't know if you can see, I have the two little stitches there and I'm going to come back down and try to keep my distance. I'm coming back down the same. And the first stitch isn't that tight. So let's tighten it up. There we go. So I'm just going to keep going. And as you can see, the felt is sort of eating a stitch, which is fine. Um, and I'm going to just keep doing that all the way around. When I get to the corner, I'm going to catch the, make sure I catch this last bead and stitch it this way. And then I'm going to catch the last bead to stitch it that way. And then when I get here on the side, I'm actually going to leave it, start a new thread, and I'm going to work on this end because I want the two ends to be perfect um, and for everything to be where it's supposed to be uh, in the middle so that, and as you can see, the material is just a slight bit shorter than the, so when I fold it, it fits in there perfectly. So I, the material is just a slight bit shorter. So I'm going to do this end next because if I can just come along the side, I'm going to be short when I get to the top, to the, 
if I come along the long side, I'm going to be short when I get to where the snap is. So I'm going to do this side and then I'll work my way down. Um, but what I'm going to work in is where you're going to put your stitches instead of going into the beads because you don't really have the same beads. This is, I'm actually going to use this thread. So this is my outside warp thread. Can you see it? My outside warp thread here. I'm sort of catching in between the beads. There we go. So I'm going to use my outside warp thread and catch it and then come through the material come back over and then you know, I'll show you and then I'll just pull it out so come from the, from the inside so that I would come through the material I'm catching on everything here because it's, I'm trying to do this when my threads way over somewhere else of course there we go so that, ignore that thread. That's the thread that's coming from where I'm actually sewing. There we go. So come through and then you would go back up here and you can try and go through the two beads, but they're, they're this way. The beads are this way. So what I would usually do is once I come up here is I would catch this thread here. See, I'm catching this thread and then I would come back over here and then st stick it in. Yeah, let's see. I would go straight back out. Yep, I'm going to go straight back out. So I would go straight back out. I'm trying to get the tail out of the way now. There we go. So I'd go straight back out and then I would come along the edge here and just go two beads over and catch the thread again and catch the backing again. And then not get a big knot and everything. Why does it always do this when I'm filming? I'd love to know. Is there some like Murphy's law about this? So what's going to happen is it's this, this thread we're going to ignore because that wouldn't be there. What's going to happen on the back side? I want to show you is you're going to end up with an extra thread that runs along. See, there's the thread there. That's the thread that I took over. That's this one. See, and you're just going to end up with a little thread along the outside and you're not even going to see it. It's just going to thicken up that thread edge. That's all it's going to do. Okay. And it's a good place where you could, if you wanted to do, you know, some of the bead embroidery edging techniques that you could definitely do that. That would be lovely. Um, so I'm going to sew this all on and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn this into a book and again this is felt so even if it was leather you could easily trim it so this isn't perfectly see it's not perfectly cut there's some extra extra here that shouldn't be there so I'll trim that up make sure it's exactly fitting the way I need it to and then we'll sew um, sort of like a book's um, seaming down the center and um, then we'll have a finished product and I'm going to be able to put my needles away. I'm so excited. I'll be back. Okay, so I wanted to um, come back and show you. I'm doing the side now. I've come around this corner here. You can see that I've come around the corner and come through the bead and so I wanted to show you close up without the threads being getting tangled everywhere. So I'm coming between the red and blue so I have to go back to the red and blue. I come through here first just the um, thread and then I come and I take a bite out of my material. So my bites probably I don't know a couple of millimeters and then I come back up the exact same place between the red and the blue here that I went through before and come back. And then I come over. Okay, so that's what I have. So this is what it looks like on the front. You can see that there's just it just thickens up the edge, which is not a big deal. And then I'm coming between the red and the blue. So I would come over the two beads, come in between the red and the blue, catch both of those threads. Try not to catch. I'm trying not to catch the fuzzy stuff, the felt at the same time. Only because I can more accurately take a bite out of the felt this way. Okay, so I take a bite out of the felt. Then I come back up through same place between the red and the blue. Okay, you can actually feel it scraping on the beads. So let's see if I can get it. So there you go. You can sort of see how this is going. It's just putting them beside the beads. 
this is the top piece that's been done and you can see just little tiny bites but it's enough that it's going to hold the felt I've already done the other end but the string is still hanging so that I can go back down this side with that string so I'm working my way along here and making sure that I'm I'm sort of stretching the felt a little bit as I go so when I'm holding it I'm sort of pulling so this is flat in this part of my hand here so I'm going like this and holding it so that I know that this is all going to fit in the space that I need it to fit in so it's coming along really nice and the reason I didn't glue this down for those of you who um, you know are um, what do you call it there we go for those of you who are going to be using leather um, and are, I told you to glue it down is because I actually want to be able to take some needles and go like this in here in this section as well and if there's glue in there in the in the background I'm not going to be able to do that so I didn't want to waste any of the felt space by making the glue with the glue soaks through the felt it'll be a problem so um, for those of you who are also gluing leather and making like a strip behind something uh, a complete strip or even just a square strip uh, make sure you don't glue right to the very edges because you are going to need to take a bite and sew it after it dries so after it dries then you would do a bead edging or you would do a sewed edging like I'm doing here where you have the you know and you just do it matching color of the micro suede or the leather that you're using and um, yeah so this is coming along really good I just thought I'd stop and and let you see sort of where I'm going so I'll leave it on for a little bit recording so that you can um, sort of watch it in fast motion I guess okay I know for some of you you want to know how I finish the thread what do I do with this thread so I have the thread coming out I do every single bead near the corners just to make sure that they're good and solid on the corners um, as you can see it's all stitched on and I need to cut this thread so that I can move on well you have this whole lovely side that you're beaded that you can have some fun with so I'm going to just take it hopefully it'll focus for me and I'm just going to come around the thread and I'm going to make myself a knot there we go one and I'm going to come turn it over to the bead side and the blue bead here is the closest so I'm just going to come down the beads da, 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 da. see and if you want you can weave it back in and out of the beads only um, a little bit just to uh, make sure that your knot is good and secure just trying to get just the beads only come on there we go and I'll see you go back and forth a couple of times and then you know that because so this is still um, even if you've got glue on the back side of these beads as long as you didn't like super soak the beads which you shouldn't have um, you'll still have a piece of fabric that you can so there we go I got this lovely piece it actually works better if I actually push it down like I'm supposed to so this is going to be the front and so then I'll, when I want to open it I'll just take it and go like that and open it so everything matches up everything lines up it looks really good I'm really happy with it so let's put the center in now because I know I could trim this down I didn't worry about getting too fussy with it the bottom line is I need to find the middle so I've got some thread left enough to do what I need to do here and I'm going to make a knot, double knot. And no big deal. And in this case, I'm actually going to, because this is um, Ceylon, it's synthetic, so I can actually, and if you're using Fireline, you can do the same thing. I'm just melting what was left of the tip on that knot so that that knot is good and secure. Um, I don't want to see the knot, so I'm going to actually bury it here. But I need to figure out where the middle is so I'm going to put it so there's my four 
the stripe of four in the middle. So I'm just coming in a couple of beads and I'm going to bury my knot in there. Okay, now I'm going to sew, but I'm going to be sewing this strip of beads. So basically I'm going to come over a bead and come out through the felt on the inside while I'm holding this in place and then I'm going to come back the way I came and come up again in the middle of the beads. Okay. Now you can also travel, so this is just catching the threads, the warp threads. Um, you can also travel, if you want to go from one side to the other, you could stitch it on this way um, through the beads or you could travel through the beads. So if I want to travel to my next spot, if I don't want the spots really close together, I can travel through the beads. So I'm coming through the, this row of beads here. I'm going to come up four beads from where I did my first stitch. I'm going to go back down between the two rows of beads, straight back down. I want to go straight, straight back down. Okay. And catch my scissors and everything. Of course. There we go. And then I'm going to take another stitch. And again, I need to come back up between the beads, between that. See, so I'm making these little stitches and they're connected to the back base here. <coughs> so I'll show you one more time. So I'm going to come back a bead so I can sort of see where my thread's coming out. It's coming out just below this red one here. So I'm going to come back on the other side of this white one. And I'm going to check on the other side as I'm coming through. See, it's coming back at the exact same spot, which is awesome. And I'm going to tack it back down again. Now you could actually jump this way, the four beads on the inside. So I'll show you that one too. So I want to come four beads from where I was. So I know I was at that red one there. So I need to come one, two, three, one more bead. So there's four beads. So I'm just poking up, trying to get to the right place. So there's four beads up. So I was at this red bead here. Sorry, this red bead here. So it's one, two, three, four. So I'm four beads because I'm coming up right there between the red and the blue, right on that intersection. And on the inside, you'll get that. All right. And then I could come back down instead of going back up. Because this is a needle case, I don't really care. Um, if this was, you know, something that I was making that was much more. So I can come back down the four beads and you can pick one side or the other, or both sides. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one each time and I can come back up there. And if I look, look at that. When I came back up, it came back up almost exactly the right spot. I just, I'm just, I still have it in the beads in the back. I'm just, and I could do a second. Come back up here. So I can feel the beads when you go through, but see, I'm over to one too many. So I need to come over. There we go. Back to my spot where I was. Okay. So then I would travel at four more beads and I would do another whip stitch like this to, to do it. So I'm just going to continue to do this, um, all the way through. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could just come over one bead. I'll show you one bead down. So I'd have one bead space between them and then I'm going to come four beads approximately. Yep. I can see, let's see if I can get this to focus close enough for you so you can see it. There you go. You can actually see the threads and uh, when I get it under my microscope, I can actually see the threads. Yeah. You can see threads going over top. So there's thre threads going over top in between these two. So you see, there's no threads going over top of these ones. So this is just the warp threads. So when I'm coming back up between the two like this, I know that there's nothing else there. So I'll see there's four rows. I'm coming up between the two rows. Okay. And these ones, as you can see, they've been pulled down by the stitching that I did. See, there's see the thread that that's right there. 
that was when I came back and went over one. So one, two, three, four. Oh, guess what? I'm in the right place. So if you're not sure, you can even leave the thread showing, poking up. And then once you bring it down, tighten it up from the inside. And you know, once you bring it up. So, so I'm going to continue to do that to um, bind these. And I see it's not straight in there right now. So I need to fix that. It's at the right spot at the top, but not on the bottom. So I'm going to continue to do that until I have them all lined up and sewn on. And then I'm going to check and I can already see that this side's going to be too long and this top's going to be sticking out a bit. So I'm going to just trim it up, make it pretty, and we'll be back with the finished product. Yay, we're all done. That's lovely. I'm so happy. So you can see it's there. I would have done it invisible wise because I had started it the bigger wise. You can see it, but I don't really care. So let's put some needles away so, you know, I can use the inside for my longer ones and I could just like, you just stick them in here. So these are the ones that are slightly bent, but they're still usable. Um, I like to, when I'm looming, start with a, a straight needle and I can tell by the thickness of them, what size they are. So I can put the bigger ones on this side and this, the 12s on this side. So this is a, yeah, that's a 12. It's a lot thinner and much more flexible. But see, they can just, they fit in here easily. And then I can take my shorts, which are my little ones here, and I could just stick them in here really easily. I'm just going to take all my shorts. They're all the same size and width, so I'm not worried about that. They're all 11s. I always work with 11s with shorts. So you can see, and then when I close it, they're all inside. They're not bothering me. They're not going to get bent. They're not going to get racked. And then when I need a needle, I just can open it and I know my 10s are here and my 11s or 12s are here. I don't have any 11s. And you can see they're on that side. So I can put them on the inside and I can put them on the two outsides. So you can do whatever you want. Um, you could even cut a little slit and put a threader in there if you had if you had a threader that you wanted. So I'm very happy. I have a place to store my needles that's pretty and I'll find it. So when it sits on my bead board with all the other stuff that I have here, um, which let me just, I'll do a quick little move the camera thing. So I have like beads and other things laying around that I'm working on other projects. So that's what it looks like. So if it's sitting there, I'm going to see it. I'm going to spot it really easily amongst all my other stuff. Um, so yeah, this is a traditional sort of uh, Northern Plains Indian uh, pattern. And I love it. And it's my own spin on it. And I designed it myself. This is similar, the flower in the middle, but the rest of it's all sort of my own doing. And then this is just sort of a traditional triangle pattern. And then you have the book spine per se. And then you have my needles. I have my needles in a safe place. This is great. So they don't have to be on this little piece of paper anymore where I'm poking myself. If I wanted to, I could even put a full pack of needles here. Let's see if I've got one out. Yeah, I do. So I've got a full pack here of John James, but that's not what I intended it for. Um, those go in a separate place. Those are unused needles. So I don't mix my used with my unused, but I, I don't throw needles out until they either break or they're so bent that I can't use them. So like this one's pushing it, but if I was doing some seed beating, I'd still use it. So I have a place for my needles. I'm so happy. Okay. Well, take care. I hope you learned something from this. If you have questions about how you would use sort of this covering the whole back technique, um, for other projects that you're working on, that's different than this. Um, cause basically this is what, this is a technique that you would apply to the back of a bracelet or the back of a piece of loomed work. Um, so if you're doing that, and you have questions about, okay, well, I'm doing this for headband or for a choker. Um, what should I do? Or what can I do with this or that? Don't hesitate to put comments below. I welcome your comments uh, for sure, for sure, for sure. So take care and keep on making for many spankings. Bye. Mm -hmm.